So I'll be honest, I'm on a bit of a James Cameron kick right now, and seeing as how this crowning achievement of his is 25 years old this month, what better time to talk about it? Titanic. Now, honestly, I haven't really seen a whole lot of videos talking about this, which is crazy. But when this movie came out in 1997, people went nuts. Everybody was saying that this is the greatest love story ever told. Everyone was saying that the disastrous aspect of this movie was absolutely incredible and jaw-dropping. But does it still hold up? So just in case you didn't go to elementary school and don't know what this is, the RMS Titanic was the pride and joy of the White Star Line back in the day. At the time, it was the largest moving object ever built. The most luxurious liner of her era. The ship of dreams. The ship that could not be sunk. Alas, it hits an iceberg and two hours later, it becomes the deadliest sunken ship in human history. 1,500 people died in the early hours on April 15th, 1912 in the North Atlantic. And James Cameron has written a partially true, but very much fictional narrative here. And two of the fictional characters here are Rose, played by Kate Winslet, and Jack, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Two extremely polar opposites when it comes to the social structure. Rose is part of the social elite, and she's married to a man much older than her, played by Billy Zane, who, yeah, I'll get to in a bit. And Leonardo DiCaprio locks out. He wins a ticket on a bet. He's as poor as poor can get, $10 in his pocket. But when these two stumble across each other on the decks of the Titanic, it leads to one of the most unforgettable romances in movie history. And you have all this put together with James Cameron's equally amazing direction, the disastrous aspect of the movie, which honestly is the most fascinating portion for me. And all put together, this is my mother's favorite movie of all time. Um, and here's the thing, I don't blame her one bit. Anytime she sees this on TV Guide, anytime it shows up on her feed, she turns it on no matter what point in the movie it's in. And it had been a really long time since I sat through this thing, so for the purposes of this review, I had to give it another look. And yeah, it's still really damn impressive. Kate Winslet was not James Cameron's original choice to play the role of Rose. Kate Winslet was insistent that this was her part. And man, does she hit a bullseye in every way. This is a woman who feels so constrained by the social agenda of her class. And she so desperately wants to break away from those shackles. She wants to be a free spirit. And we get to explore that beautiful arc along with her. And once she meets Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie, pretty much all hell breaks loose. Um, <laughs> this is, I honestly can sit here and say that this may be, yeah, this is a cheesy romance for sure. There is no denying the cheesiness of Titanic. And sitting here 25 years later, a lot of this dialogue does come off extremely dated. I'm not just talking about the king of the world gimmick that Leonardo DiCaprio does at the beginning. But some of the cheesiness of this dialogue was just something I couldn't shake. But despite the way these lines are written, Leo and Kate Winslet just have such incredible chemistry together. Their banter honestly kind of reminds me of Han Solo and Princess Leia. And yeah, this kind of is a melodramatic version of the Han and Leia relationship, isn't it? You have your so-called princess, who Leo does call a brat at times, then you have the scruffy-looking, down-to-earth, sarcastic, nice guy. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's ever made a comparison between Titanic and Star Wars, but here we are. Which, okay, yeah, let's talk about Leonardo DiCaprio here. Again, not James Cameron's original choice for this part. I was actually kind of floored to see the list of names that James Cameron actually had in mind before actually choosing Leonardo DiCaprio. And here's a fun but haunting factoid for you. It was originally going to be River Phoenix before his untimely passing in 1993. But then Leonardo DiCaprio just freaking knocks it out of the park at the audition. And with this role, it turns him into not only the heartthrob of the late 90s going into the early 2000s, but he's a superstar for life. And Leonardo DiCaprio still sits as one of my favorite actors to this very day. And looking at roles like Titanic, it's easy to see why. Jack Dawson is a very likable hero here. You can certainly see what Rose sees in this guy. And the way his character is introduced and how excited he is to get aboard this ship. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. And he was really, really fun to watch on this revisiting. Speaking of fun to watch, I cannot overlook Billy Zane as Cal, Rose's fiancé. Man, what a jerk. This is like the quintessential jerk of 90s movies here. When the ship sinks, he just becomes so much more of a bastard. When Rose is aboard the rescue ship and it's lowering to the sea and Jack is right next to him, there is no 
There is no relief plan, is there? I always win, Jack. Oh, I just wanted to see him get his comeuppance, man. And Billy Zane it just... He was so, so good in this movie. I mean, everybody's on top of their game. You have Kathy Bates in a supporting role in this movie, knocking it out of the park like she usually does. If you don't shut your pie hole, ma'am, there'll be one less on this ship. Now sit down. Ah, <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of over-the-top moments like that, isn't there? But again, I cannot stress this enough. Despite the over-the-top aspect of this movie, especially towards the first half, James Cameron's direction is spellbinding for the time. The fact that he's able to take not only historical events and real historical characters, but he's also able to intersplice this really investing romance into the mix, it makes it all the more tragic once you do get to the sinking of the ship, which is recreated absolutely like, oh my god, <laughs> it just sends shivers up and down your spine. And James Horner's original score here only adds to the magnitude of the situation. Yeah, this score can be extremely upbeat and fun, especially when you go to those Irish underground parties on the ship. Then when the ship starts sinking and Leonardo DiCaprio's eventual descent down to the bottom of the ocean, man, it just becomes so much more heartbreaking. Which leads me to the scene that always scarred me when I was a little boy. Rose trying to wake up Jack while she was on that door and Jack is dying of hypothermia. Oh my god, guys. Like, how am I sitting here so emotionally invested in this thing? Like, this is so cheesy. But with these two actors at the helm, this just works. Freaking love Titanic, guys. James Cameron did a wonderful job directing this movie. The historical recreation of the sinking itself is quite mesmerizing to look at. The opening sequence when these archaeologists are actually going underwater and examining the sunken ship, it's almost like you're going into a haunted house in a lot of ways. And these archaeologists actually do refer to this as a ghost ship, which is just... And James Horner's score like swelling into the background too, like, oh, it's so good. But a lot like the other nostalgic movies of my childhood and my upbringing, what really gets me about Titanic is the emotion. The fact that these two upon meeting are inseparable and that Jack is at Rose's side to his dying breath. Uh, this movie's so good, guys. I cannot shower enough praise upon Titanic. Yes, the movie is very long, so it's not going to be as rewatchable for a lot of other people. Yeah, the dialogue can be very cheesy, but again, with these two actors here, I can't even really explain it. You just have to watch the movie and see how they interact because it's just so, so pitch perfect. But yeah, there are a couple of lines where I just kind of snickered and I was like, okay, real people wouldn't be saying that. Yes, the disastrous aspect of the movie is my favorite part and how humanity will just sink to their lowest low and the fact that they're doing whatever it takes to survive this disaster. It's a really interesting examination of what we're willing to do to survive. But I will admit, when you see some of these ship crew members and some of these survivors actually riding on the boats, it's apparently obvious that these were recorded in front of green screens. And unfortunately, it doesn't really hold up as well for me as I would have liked, but that's just a nitpick, my friends. Titanic is an incredible achievement that James Cameron should be incredibly proud of. And I can sit here and say that it's one of his best movies. I'm going to give Titanic an A. If you haven't revisited this movie in a while, I strongly recommend you guys do it because it's got probably the most famous love story ever told on screen. This is still one of the highest grossing movies of all time. It kept the highest grossing title of all time up until Avatar came out, ironically enough, and it's still one of the most influential movies ever made. Propelled Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet to a whole other stratosphere, and they are still superstars to this very day. And James Cameron continued to prove why he is a master at what he does. But let me know what you guys thought of Titanic down in the comment section, guys. Let me know how many times you guys saw this movie in the theaters. I'm definitely curious to see what your reactions to this movie are. As always, I love discussing all new things in cinema and all things entertainment. So if you're a new viewer, do consider becoming a subscriber. Hit that notification bell as well, so that way you don't miss a second more of the action. And do me a favor and smash the like button, because these are incredibly helpful in getting this content out there to more people. Speaking of James Cameron, I will be watching Avatar The Way of Water this Friday, so definitely expect a review for that this upcoming weekend. Very excited to also talk about Babylon with you guys. There's Puss in Boots The Last Wish that I still have to check out. A lot of content that I got to crank out before the new year turns. So, guys, I hope you guys can come along for the ride. This is a great community that we've all built together. Y'all are the best. And with all that being said, back talk, commence. Yeah.